It probably started about maybe two years ago. Two years, two years ago when it started to become a bit sort of noticeable in my uh, sort of uh, life. Uh, what I mean by that is that uh, I started to be starting to get up at night to go to the toilet, to go for a pee, uh, uh, which was sort of quite unusual for me. You know, uh, at times you said, well, okay, maybe I've been drinking later on, sort of before going to bed, and so put it down to that. Um, but at the beginning, as I said, for a couple of years ago, it wasn't happening on a, um, on a regular basis, but it was happening, so it became a noticeable. Um, it sort of came to a head, I would say, probably 12 months ago, I, sort of two years ago when it first started, okay, I uh, sort of took a bit more notice, and like a lot of these things, you sort of take it in your stride. You know, you get up maybe once or twice to go to the loo at night, and you don't think nothing of it until it does become a real sort of issue. And I think probably uh, the summer of last year, I would say probably June, July, I decided to go and see my GP and uh, tell uh, her my symptoms. And uh, first of all, we, had a, we did a PSA test. Bearing in mind, I'd had a PSA test in 2012 because a similar sort of thing was happening then, if you like, not, not as... Uh, not as probably severe as it had been sort of 12 months ago or 18 months ago, but probably the beginnings of sort of, you know, having to get up at night on the odd occasion. And I went to see my GP and uh, we did a PSA test and that was all fine. I think okay. Um, and okay, so a year ago, or rather should I say 18 months ago when I went to, to have, uh, to see my GP for the first time, we uh, did the PSA test again the figures came back all okay, and we left it at that. Things didn't improve very much because I wasn't sort of, and I sort of complained about it. I went back to see my GP in August of last year, and I saw a gentleman there, when, not my regular GP, somebody else, and uh, he's, we did sort of tests again. Uh, he said to me, I think for 10 days, check on, uh, make a record of how much, uh, how many sort of, uh, glasses of fluid you take a day, water, drink, what have you, coffees, etc., etc. Make a record of this, and then come back and see me in 10 days' time. And I made a record of all this and what have you, and as it was with the, like a lot of these things, actually by the time I went back to see my GP, things sort of steadily improved, I wasn't getting up as often. And he put it down, simply said, well, he looked at my age, this and that, never did any other real tests, and sort of said, well, you know, it's just something, you know, Basically, so you're going to have to put up with it, which I wasn't very happy about. I thought, okay, fine, things have actually improved. Maybe things have got better, etc. I went away on holiday in September, and while I was away on holiday, uh, things continued as they had been before. I was, it wasn't just at night, I was sort of uh, getting up in the, the daytime, sort of sitting by the pool, not really drinking. I mean, you can understand if you're drinking maybe a lot of water, beer, wine, or what have you, that you'd have to be getting up. And I was, uh, I was, going, to the, I was going to the loo every, I don't know, every half an hour, every hour, or what have you. Not continuously, but there were periods when you were sort of relaxed and you were going to the loo. The only problem was, okay, when I was going to the loo, I wasn't sort of fully, if you like, um, emptying my bladder. That was my underlying problem. So, anyway, as I said, you tend to, things happen and you tend to get on with them. Life goes on, you're getting up at night and you just go, you go and you take it in your stride. It doesn't, until it's sort of like, right, I've got to do something about this. So anyway, I came back from holiday, booked an appointment to see my GP, saw my regular GP, told her the symptoms again, what I'd been experiencing, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, she said, okay, fine. Uh, what did we do at the beginning? Uh, what was it? Um, did the same sort of test, sort of check what I was taking, my intake of fluid, how many times I was going to the loo, et cetera, et cetera. Did this over a period of time, uh, I think a two-week period. Went back to see her, and then she decided to give me a drug, which was, if you like, a bladder relaxant. So, I think she was going down that route there, that maybe she just thought maybe I'd had a, an overactive bladder, if you like. So anyway, we, we went down that route there, and... Uh, Took this drug, I think, for about, I don't know, a week. How long it was for? Yeah, a week. Nothing changed. Went back to see her again. 
she said, okay, we'll try something else. She gave me another particular drug. This one here, I think I took just for one night because I actually read the, uh, if you like, the, the proprieties of the drug and what it does, the side effects, etc. And one of the, the things was, one of the, one of the uh, if you like, uh, pieces of literature said that if you had problems in actually passing uh, water, not to take this drug at all. So I, I stopped it, went back to see her, saw somebody else because I wasn't able to see her. He gave me another type of drug or what have you and started to take that. And this was, I can tell you exactly, it was in November of last year. Things hadn't really sort of changed at all. It wasn't, the drug wasn't really doing any good to me at all. It got to a point, I went out for lunch with my sister on the Sunday. You wasn't feeling great, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, I, I sort of, you know, I was going to, I, it was, it really, I think to, at that point there, it started to get to a point where I was getting up, going to the loo, not passing water. There was, there was obviously the, the urge to go, but nothing really sort of much happened. And I really sort of suffered a heck of a lot that day. Anyway, went home, went to bed, and that night there, probably the worst night I've ever had in my life, in all honesty, I was uh, literally getting up every half an hour. Every half an hour. God knows how I got there. Anyway, it got to a point that the early hours of the morning, uh, I think I rang, um, what time was it? Uh, maybe five or six o'clock in the morning, I, uh, I rang 111 here, uh, primary care, not the actual emergency number to get some assistance, and they said to me, as soon as your surgery opens, call, go to your surgery, uh, go and see a GP, get them to assess you, and get them to submit you to uh, SAU, the Surgical Assessment Unit at my local hospital, which I did. When I went to my GP that morning, I mean, as soon as she saw me and sort of uh, touched my tummy and my bladder, it was, you know, she could tell the, the bladder was absolutely sort of virtually at bursting point and wrote a letter, sent me down to my local hospital here, Frimley Park, and uh, went to the hospital. As you're in the hospital, they seek you, they assess you, blah, blah, blah. This While I was being assessed by, when you actually went into a cubicle to be assessed by a doctor, um, I <laughs> probably, I don't know, <laughs> which maybe touched a part of my body where it was absolutely in pain. But they had to uh, uh, immediately put a catheter in me because I think otherwise it would have been very dangerous. And um, then I went into, if you like, uh, uh, shivers for about <laughs> 10 minutes while so my body relaxed again. But basically, they emptied my bladder because it had come to the bursting point. And uh, yeah, they did that. They, 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 then, then I was a much better person, if you like, because I was, you know, <sighs> I probably hadn't been to the toilet for about, I don't know, a day or so. In any case, um, I, uh, as I said, I, um, they, uh, they did this. I waited for the later assessment. And uh, then at the end of the day, I was meant to, I think, to have had a scan that sometimes they, that never happened. And they sent me home. They said to me that I need to keep the uh, catheter in me for two weeks and then go back to this, the clinic where Essentially, what happens there is that they take the caster out, and then you've got to be able to pee by yourself. And then you're, you should be, if you like, well, I think from that point onwards, there would have been other, if you like, uh, uh, assessments to go down the line, but that's, that's it. Any case, fortunately for me, uh, the next day, because I have uh, my own medical insurance, I called up my uh, insurance company, and I said to them, listen, I need to see somebody as soon as possible. Uh, if you like, uh, because um, obviously I'd want, I don't want this thing around my leg for the next few weeks. And two, I uh, want to be obviously diagnosed sooner rather than later. So I uh, got in contact with my insurance company and they said to me, they got me an appointment uh, as soon as possible. I think within a week I was able to see Mr. Barber. I went to see Mr. Barber and uh, the first thing he saw with me, he, he said, right, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this out. Uh, he said, uh, obviously this was a by the by, if you like, with the system. He said, I don't know why, because you can actually self-catheterize yourself. There is a system where you can do it, etc. He says, it's, I don't think it's available on the NHS, but obviously he gave it to me because I enjoy it. He says, you know, this is so much more hygienic, better for you, etc., etc., and all the other things. So anyway, 
he said to me, first thing we're going to do is take this off, come back this afternoon, see the nurse, have this taken out, and then I will do some tests on you. At that point, I don't think he uh, realised or assumed that there was any sort of long going, uh, any surgery would have, would have taken place. I think what he was hoping to do was probably treat this with probably with drugs, if, if you like. In any case, I can't remember in actually what order we did this, but uh, when I went to see him again, uh, we did a, um, I can't remember the word for it, but they did a test uh, uh, like a, an echogram on your bladder to see uh, how full it is. You went for a test, what they call a flow test, to see how much water you pass. And from that, he said to me that basically my flow rate was very, 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 very low for a person of my age. Um, he informed me that uh, what I did have was a, an enlarged prostate. And from the initial findings that he had, it's, uh, he found that uh, the prostrate uh, was actually um, blocking my ureter. And that's what was sort of giving me sort of this low flow rate and also causing me to sort of not properly empty my bladder, if you like. I think I had maybe various other meetings with him later on down and we did other sort of tests. And that's when he uh, explained to me the options I had available. Terps being one of them, uh, green light. At the time, there was also Eurolift, but I think when he did later tests, he said that the Eurolift wasn't really suitable for me. Uh, and he told me, obviously, the procedures involved and also the side effects with these available, which I wasn't really too happy about, to be perfectly honest with you. I thought, you know, uh, if, if you have to have it done, if there's no other option, then fine. But, you know, I didn't really want to go down that route. And then he suggested to me this particular one here, which he was very enthusiastic about. Uh, he uh, told me, first of all, I don't think, one, it's not available under the NHS. Two, I don't think your insurance company will cover it either, but you can try. Uh, he said, but there have been, at this point in time, I think he said something like 300 cases. And they've been, I think if he was correct in saying, I think they were like 90% all came out quite successful. And what he meant by that was that the, the recovery rate was very, very quick. And also the loss of sexual function was virtually nil to minimal, which is the reason why I didn't want to go down the route of the other ones. One of the reasons, if you like. Because I asked him, I said, well, how long do you say when you say if someone is uh, you know, able to sort of get back and get back to work or normal life, if you like. And he told me that he'd had a case of a dentist who'd had the operation. He was back in his feet within two or three days. So I thought, okay, fine. He told me what the cost was going to be. And I said, okay, it's not too prohibitive. Um, maybe we'll give it a go. And uh, we did. And uh, uh, first, um, I said, yeah, fine. We'll go ahead with this. You know, I'd much prefer to go down this route here, you know, uh, if it's going to be for my long-term benefit, I'll go down for this route here. Um, it wasn't available to me. I think we had a meeting probably about, well, a year ago, in December of last year. Uh, he said the next available time where they were going to, he was going to be doing this operation, because I think, if I'm correct in saying that the apparatus had to come from the United States, it wasn't always here. It only came here for a certain amount of time when he did X amount of patients. He said that, uh, he said, if you're happy with this, think about it, let me know, and we'll book in for the next available time. And the next available time was the end of January. That was cancelled because I think maybe there, there were a lack of patients available. Who sort of, so the next one, I think, was he let me know, and uh, that was going to be the end of February. Um, booked that in. We did the end of February. I went in on the Sunday morning, had the procedure at lunchtime. Um, back in the ward after a couple of hours or whatever it was there. And the next day, Monday lunchtime, I was out of hospital. On the Wednesday, I was back at, in my restaurant working. Okay, it took me a bit of time, I think, to get back to sort of full capacity, if you like, but I was walking about, I had no issues. Um, yeah, I was, I think, within maybe, I think, uh, three or four weeks, he still allowed the time uh, to sort of fully recover. He said, you can go back to the gym, do what you normally do. And I think within, I don't know when it was, uh, probably the end of March, maybe the beginning of April, I was out on my bicycle, because I, I do rides in a, a bike, you know, 
bike riding as a hobby. And um, yeah, I mean, uh, I after the operation, uh, excuse my friend, but I'd, I'd never peed like that. For, I can remember when it was seriously, you know, it was because it was really causing me an effort. And pff, it was great, really, in, 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 in all honesty. I think I went back to see him after three weeks to see how everything was going. And um, I told him, I said, they're great, you know, in all honesty. You t you see, you t sometimes you see your body tends to adapt to how it's going through things in life. You don't realize and think, okay, there's a problem here. Obviously, okay, as you know, with age, things deteriorate, etc. But, you know, the, the way my life had been before, I thought, yeah, okay, fine. Like, getting up at night, sure, get up. If you get up, you get one. Because maybe it wasn't happening every day, I can't remember now. Uh, it was only in the latter stages when it became a regular thing. And it, I, think it was, and I think probably the worst point was obviously leading up to when I had my episode having to be admitted to hospital, where things really deteriorated. But before that, you, you really, uh, your body adapts and you get on with things. And then you don't realize how things actually should be, or how lucky you are afterwards, until you've had this uh, up. And yeah, I mean, great, really. I haven't suffered since. I don't, um, I don't have the issue where I'm having to go uh, get up during the night. Um, I don't even go often during the daytime, if you like. My, if you like, it's not a case, oh, I've got to go now, or you, know, you can hold, or whatever. You, back to really, as I was maybe three, four years ago. Um, so yeah, it's, um, I'm, I'm really pleased, if you like. Uh, the best money I've spent, put it this way. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, you waste a lot of money, but this was certainly, you know, it was uh, very well worth it. Um, and also the other factor was that it was sort of um, not having to spend a lot of time in hospital. Um, literally, you know, I mean, I'd had a, another medical issue some years ago where, you know, it was a lot longer procedure, et cetera, et cetera. So this was, for me, fantastic. I don't know what it's like I don't know what, for example, what you have to go through when you do Terps or Green Light or the other one. Um, there's a guy who I know who's in his 70s who's recently had, uh, he's actually been under Mr. Barber. I don't know exactly which procedure he's had, but uh, I know from what he's told uh, my, my business partner, because they're good friends, that uh, you know, there's a lot of suffering still involved even after the, the procedure. Um, in fact, a sister of mine works in, in the department uh, where the urology department here at Family Park, and uh, she's told me, you know, that she, she sees a lot of people who sort of book in for patients, and you know, she's known lots of people who, for example, even after this procedure, there is no real sort of 100% guarantee that there'll be no comeback. Now, in saying that, mine's only been, what now, uh, eight months? So I suppose it's still early stages. I don't know what it's, what it's like for the other 300 or so patients who've had uh, this procedure, if, if, uh, how long ago they've had their procedure, and how they're feeling maybe after one or two years, I don't know. But so far, I'm, I, I, I feel great. Seriously, I feel great, yeah. And um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy that I had it done, you know. My symptoms started uh, probably about two years ago when it became very noticeable that I started to get up on a, if you like, uh, maybe two, possibly three times a night. At the beginning, it wasn't happening every day, but it was uh, happening on maybe, I don't know, two, maybe three nights uh, a week. And it started to become a little bit noticeable. It wasn't always on a continuous basis. It was happening, then not happening, if you like, um, and I was sort of monitoring what I was sort of drinking, uh, maybe not drinking, last thing at night before I went to bed, that sort of thing there. Um, but it was something which I was sort of taking in my normal sort of life and not really taking too much notice about it. It began to become, if you like, quite noticeable about 18 months ago, where it was sort of, you know, getting up, getting up, sort of really sort of started to hassle me a little bit, if you like, because you weren't getting sort of a good night's sleep. Sometimes you were going straight back to sleep, so it really, really wasn't bothering you. But on, the, on some occasions it was, and so, you know, it, it did become an issue. So when things started to become, if you like, a little bit problematic, I would say it would have been in the summer of last year, where I first went to see my GP. Went to see my GP, 
he uh, said, okay, we'll do a PSA test to check your figures with the ones you'd had done, say, five years previously. Did the PCA, PSA test, and they came back all fine. So my PSA levels were okay, fine, etc. Nothing untoward with my prostrate. He put it down to sort of an age thing, uh, something which said, well, you know, with time you may need to take some sort of uh, other drugs to sort of combat this, but for the moment, it's not really a big issue, so, you know, live with it, basically. This was in August of last year. As it was, I probably, in the, the time before going to see him again, things had sort of a little bit improved, because as I said, they weren't happening on a very regular basis, so it was sort of something which I think, well, it, it is and isn't it, maybe there's something which will go away. So I went away on holiday in September uh, of last year, and while I was away on holiday, Things seemed to go back to the same old ways again. I was getting up maybe two, three times a night. And the other unusual thing was that I was going also in the daytime. I was having to go to the, the loo on a, very on a more regular basis than normal, even though I wasn't sort of drinking uh, any more fluid or water, wine or whatever than, than normal. So I decided, okay, when I get back home to, back home to England, I'll you know, make an appointment to go and see my GP. I got around to going to see my GP again, probably about a month after I came back from holiday. Went back to see my regular GP, and she examined me and said, well, she actually diagnosed me with a pill, a drug which was to do with, uh, help with uh, an overactive bladder. It was actually a uh, bladder relaxant, this drug. So I took this uh, drug for the prescribed time, which I think was uh, maybe two weeks, probably longer, I can't exactly remember. And then I went back to see her again after this, as uh, she instructed me to. Nothing changed after this period of time. Nothing really changed. It was exactly the same. I didn't have an overactive bladder. Uh, my problem was that when I was going to the toilet, I wasn't actually passing water properly. That's because of, you know, that's why I was having to freak me. We keep going back because I had the, the urge to go, but nothing actually ever happened. So I uh, went back to see her again, and I said to her, listen, this hasn't done anything at all. She gave me, prescribed me with another type of drug, which I took for one day. Then I happened to look at the uh, proprieties involved with this drug here, and I saw that it was, uh, it actually said on there that if you do have, you know, problems passing uh, water that you shouldn't really be taking this. So I stopped taking it immediately. I went back to, well actually, first of all, I actually went back to the pharmacy, which is attached to the, my doctor's surgery, and asked me if they could change it for me, but they said, no, you need to see your doctor first. I saw another GP, though my, my regular GP wasn't available, and he gave me uh, another type of drug, which I think I started taking for a couple of days, and then I had my, if you like, episode uh, 12 months ago of uh, having to be admitted into hospital. Uh, I went to see my uh, GP that morning to get a letter to uh, sort of uh, admit me into hospital. I uh, was taken, I was taken to Fremley Park Hospital, uh, assessed there by the uh, surgical assessment unit, and while I was there, I had to be uh, catheterized because my bladder was full to bursting point burst, basically. Um, and while I was there, uh, they said to me, you have to have this catheter in you for two weeks. Uh, after that, you'll be admitted to this clinic where they'll take it out of you. And uh, if you can pass water properly again, then all be in well. Anyway, in the meantime, uh, because I had my own uh, medical insurance, I decided to call up my insurance company and ask to see a specialist as soon as possible. And I managed to get an appointment with uh, a Mr. Barber within a week. I went to see Mr. Barber, and Mr. Barber immediately took out the catheter and gave me a box of uh, self catheterizers, uh, which he said, you can use this yourself before you go to bed at night or other times in the day, if you wish, and uh, show, the nurse showed me how to use it, etc. And he said, you know, this will help you, you know, without having you to get up at night, etc., etc., and certainly without having to have this thing attached to your body. 
In the meantime, that was sorted out. Uh, we booked him for another appointment to see Mr. Barber, uh, whereas, uh, where he uh, did a uh, bladder test, took uh, an image of my bladder to see how full or empty it was, did a flow test as well. And uh, what he noticed from the, the results of the, these tests were that the bladder wasn't fully empty in, and also that my flow rate was very, very weak, especially for a person of my age. And so he probably put it down to having a, uh, um, an enlarged prostrate. Uh, what he meant by that also was that the, the prostrate was actually uh, blocking my ether, which is the reason why I was not able to pass water properly. And at that point, he, because initially he thought that we could treat this uh, with drugs rather than sort of surgery. But he said to me, it was in such a, uh, he said, you, you can leave it if you want to, but it won't get any better. He says, the symptoms that you had where you'd be, had to be admitted to hospital will happen again, maybe in a month, maybe in two months time, but it will happen again. So he said, sooner rather than later, you will need to have surgery. He actually did give me some drugs in between time, between seeing him and actually having the procedure, which did help things a lot better in terms of sort of uh, being able to pass water and also because I was sort of self-catheterizing myself only at the beginning because after I think a couple of a week or so, I stopped doing that. I, there was no need because my actual sort of flow had got that much better. Uh, but, uh, and I said to him, things have actually improved. He said, yes, things have actually improved now for the time being, but they will start to deteriorate again. On seeing him again uh, to discuss what procedures to take, he obviously uh, made available, he said, there, there is the Terps or the Green Knight or Eurolift. I think there's maybe another one possible. He said, these are all the ones which are available. They all have a certain amount of success rate. They all have certain side effects. Uh, but there is something new, which has only been sort of, uh, at the time, I think he said there'd been maybe 300 cases. cases. And he said, this has been trialed. Uh, it's not available under the NHS. He said, I don't think it's even available under your insurance companies, uh, uh, by your insurance company. Uh, but uh, he said, the cases that I've been involved in, and also the cases where this aquablation is what he called it, um, the, the other tests that have been done, they've proven to be very successful. I think, if I remember correctly, he said that there probably were, I don't know, 90, 95% sort of success rate. Um, gave me all the, the benefits about it all. Uh, the other ones, the, the ones available, uh, he said they do have a certain amount of uh, success, but on a lot of these ones here, there's, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, a 70% chance of sexual uh, dysfunction afterwards. So. He put it on the table, he said, you can have these ones here, which are all very, very good, which I've done many of them in the past, or there's this relatively new one, which we know a little about, but not a great deal about, this aquablation. But as he put it to me, he said, you know, we've, uh, we do have a certain amount of uh, information, and they've been very, very good. He said, uh, I've done a few of these already, if I'm not mistaken, and um, it's available. Uh, but at a cost. Um, so, he said, if, you know, if you're interested, think about it, and then uh, come back and see me. Well, I went away, thought about it, discussed it with my wife, and I said, well, I'm happy enough to go ahead with this one here because I don't really want to go down the route of the other ones where there may be a strong possibility that this or that may happen afterwards. And so I went back to see Mr. Barber. Uh, we discussed it th further. And um, I decided, yeah, okay, fine. We're, I'm going to do the, uh, go ahead with the aquablation um, on the next available opportunity, uh, which wasn't uh, until, I think, the new year. This was in December I saw him. I think there was, a, there was an appointment available in the end of January. As it was, that didn't take uh, part because there weren't enough people to take part in, 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 the op in the other procedures available that day. So it was postponed further until the end of February. And uh, 
yes, went through it all. Went in on uh, the Sunday to have this uh, procedure. Went in on Sunday morning. Had the procedure about Sunday lunchtime. I think it only, if I remember rightly, uh, it probably took at the most uh, half an hour, probably less, the actual procedure itself. Uh, and within, I think, an hour and a half of being a, sort of taken down into theatre, I was awake again in, uh, in, in, the, in, uh, in the ward where they were, if you like, uh, you probably know more about the procedure anyway, where they are flushing you through, etc., to get rid of any of the blood scars, etc. Back in my uh, room in the, in the, in the hospital uh, that e early that evening, and I, the following day, lunchtime of the following day, I was uh, given the, the okay to go home. Um, all catheters taken out, sent home. Uh, this was on the Monday. On the Tuesday, I was on my feet, walking about, gingerly sort of walking about, obviously taking things a little bit easy. And on the Wednesday, I was back at work. My work is, uh, I have a restaurant, so I'm on my feet most of the day, all of the day, so I was moving about. And I think within possibly three weeks, three or four weeks, I think when I went to see him again after the, the procedure, he said, yeah, fine, if you want to, you can go back and do light exercises in the gym, whatever you feel, however best you feel. And I did that. And I think probably a few weeks down the road, I was out on my road bike, uh, out cycling with my friends, you know, one of my hobbies that I take part in, in my spare time. And yeah, it was great, really good. After the, the operation, I, um, as I said, the, uh, it was, I never felt better year for years, in all honesty. I actually said to him, I said to Mr. Barber that uh, I could not remember when I last, uh, you know, passed water as freely as I did then. Uh, it's been great, you know. Uh, no, no, no side effects, no more getting up at night, no more having that urgency where you've got to, you know, immediately go, otherwise you, th you feel like you're gonna wet yourself. Absolutely, you know, really good. Um, yeah, I was very, very, very happy with, with the procedure. Yes, very happy indeed. I can recommend it. When I went to see Mr. Barber, uh, with regards to the different options available, uh, uh, different options available to help my uh, BPH, my enlarged uh, prostate gland, he offered me the ones which are available, uh, the various sort of laser treatments, green light, TERPs, and I think Eurolift was also one of the options available at the time. But later on, when I'd had further tests, uh, some of these weren't uh, exactly suitable and I was not actually, they weren't options which I could take place. He explained to me the, the procedure involved with the laser, the heat treatment, um, the possible side effects, that may occur afterwards. And then there was this other treatment, which is called aquablation, which was the one which was not uh, freely available, if you like, uh, on the NHS or either with regards to my insurance company, where the procedure, uh, instead of being using heat, it used water, where it, if it became, it was a more precise type of uh, uh, form of surgery as opposed to the other ones, uh, where it went on to explain that uh, the other uh, type of surgery where heat was involved, it tended to sort of uh, burn away at a lot of nerve endings where, if you like, later on you may have occurred maybe sort of slight sort of sexual dysfunction. Uh, so when he offered me this other alternative, uh, I was more inclined to sort of go down the lines of maybe going down this route rather than sort of the more traditional routes in terms of sort of uh, um, prostate surgery. On the day of uh, my surgery, uh, I went down very early sort of to the admittance hospital. Um, I was admitted in uh, to theatre about midday. The uh, surgery itself I think, think took less than half an hour. Uh, within an hour and a half, two hours, I was back on my hospital ward. And I finished the day, if you like, uh, in my ward. I had a little bit of pain that evening in so much as that I had a catheter still left in me. And 
essentially what it was, was that uh, because I wasn't relaxing uh, as well enough as I should, it was causing me, if you like, a problem to sort of pass water. But with a bit of uh, sort of a few painkillers here and there, that pain eventually sort of disappeared. But it was the only pain I had had during any form of the surgery, it was that evening after the surgery. The next day, uh, by lunchtime, I was able to go home. Uh, able to go home, uh, had uh, my normal evening meal at home that day, and the next day, Tuesday, after the uh, surgery, I was up on my feet, walking about, quite sort of gingerly, obviously, after a bit of surgery, and the following day, the Wednesday, I was back at my place of work. And within, I would say, six to seven days, I was sort of walking about as per normal. Um, within three weeks, I went to see my uh, surgeon, Mr. Barber, again. He gave me the all okay if I wanted to sort of start any sort of physical exercise in the gym. Went back to the gym as I normally do, my normal routine. Did that. And I think further still down the road, probably about three or four weeks down the, the line, I was uh, out uh, road cycling with my friends. And uh, yes, it uh, had no side effects. So it came back very, very well. The, the job did what it was supposed to do. I was not getting up anymore at night, passing water freely. Everything back to normal. Better than it was before, in all honesty. My symptoms started. Uh, probably about two years ago, when it became very noticeable that I started to get up on a, if you like, uh, maybe two, possibly three times a night. At the beginning, it wasn't happening every day, but it was uh, happening on maybe, I don't know, two, maybe three nights uh, a week. And it started to become a little bit noticeable. It wasn't always on a continuous basis. It was happening, then not happening, if you like, um, and I was sort of monitoring what I was sort of drinking. Uh, maybe not drinking, last thing at night before I went to bed, that sort of thing there. Um, but it was something which I was sort of taking in my normal sort of life and not really taking too much notice about it. It began to become, if you like, quite noticeable about 18 months ago, where it was sort of, you know, getting up, getting up, sort of really sort of started to hassle me a little bit, if you like, because you weren't getting sort of a good night's sleep. Sometimes you were going straight back to sleep, so it really, really wasn't bothering you. But on, the, on some occasions it was, and so, you know, it, it did become an issue. So when things started to become, if you like, a little bit problematic, I would say it would have been in the summer of last year, where I first went to see my GP. Went to see my GP, uh, he uh, said, OK, we'll do a PSA test to check your figures with the ones you'd had done, say, five years previously. Did the PCA, PSA test, and they came back all fine. So my PSA levels were OK, fine, etc. Nothing untoward with my prostrate. He put it down to sort of an age thing, uh, something which said, well, you know, with time you may need to take some sort of uh, other drugs to sort of combat this, but for the moment, it's not really a big issue, so, you know, live with it, basically. This was in August of last year. As it was, I'd probably, in the, the time before going to see him again, things had sort of a little bit improved, because as I said, they weren't happening on a very regular basis, so it was sort of something which I think, well, it, it is and isn't it, maybe there's something which will go away. So I went away on holiday in September uh, of last year, and while I was away on holiday, things seemed to go back to the same old ways again. I was getting up maybe two, three times a night. And the other unusual thing was that I was going also in the daytime. I was having to go to the, the loo on a, very, on a more regular basis than normal, even though I wasn't sort of drinking uh, any more fluid or water, wine or whatever than the normal. So I decided, okay, when I get back home to, back home to England, I'll you know, make an appointment to go and see my GP. I got around to going to see my GP again, probably about a month after I came back from holiday. Went back to see my regular GP, and she examined me and said, well, she actually diagnosed me with a pill, a drug which was to do with, uh, help with uh, an overactive bladder. It was actually a uh, bladder relaxant, this drug. So 
I took this uh, drug for the prescribed time, which I think was uh, maybe two weeks, probably longer, I can't exactly remember. And then I went back to see her again after this, as uh, she instructed me to. Nothing changed after this period of time. Nothing really changed. It was exactly the same. I didn't have an overactive bladder. Uh, my problem was that when I was going to the toilet, I wasn't actually passing water properly. That's because of, you know, that's why I was having to frequently we keep going back because I had the, the urge to go, but nothing actually ever happened. So I uh, went back to see her again and I said to her, listen, this hasn't done anything at all. She gave me, prescribed me with another type of drug, which I took for one day. Then I happened to look at the uh, proprieties involved with this drug here. And I saw that it was, uh, it actually said on there that if you do have you know, problems passing uh, water that you shouldn't really be taking this. So I stopped taking it immediately. I went back to, well actually first of all, I actually went back to the pharmacy, which is attached to the, my doctor's surgery, and asked me if they could change it for me. But they said, no, you need to see your doctor first. I saw another GP, but my, my regular GP wasn't available. And he gave me uh, another type of drug which I think I started taking for a couple of days, and then I had my, if you like, episode uh, 12 months ago of uh, having to be admitted into hospital. Uh, I went to see my uh, GP that morning to get a letter to uh, sort of uh, admit me into hospital. I, uh, was taken, I was taken to Frimley Park Hospital, uh, assessed there by the uh, surgical assessment unit, and while I was there, I had to be uh, catheterized because my bladder was full to bursting point burst, basically. Um, and while I was there, uh, they said to me, you have to have this catheter in you for two weeks. Uh, after that, you'll be admitted to this clinic where they'll take it out of you. And uh, if you can pass water properly again, then all being well. Anyway, in the meantime, uh, because I had my own uh, medical insurance, I decided to call up my insurance company and ask to see a specialist as soon as possible. And I managed to get an appointment with uh, a Mr. Barber within a week. I went to see Mr. Barber, and Mr. Barber immediately took out the catheter and gave me a box of uh, self catheterizers, uh, which he said, you can use this yourself before you go to bed at night or other times in the day, if you wish, and uh, show the nurse showed me how to use it, et cetera, and he said, you know, this will help you, you know, without having you to get up at night, et cetera, et cetera, and certainly without having to have this thing attached to your body. In the meantime, that was sorted out. Uh, we booked him for another appointment to see Mr. Barber, uh, whereas, uh, where he uh, did a uh, bladder test, took uh, an image of my bladder to see how full or empty it was, did a flow test as well, and uh, what he noticed from the, the results of the, these tests were that the bladder wasn't fully emptying, and also that my flow rate was very, very weak, especially for a person of my age. And so he probably put it down to having a, uh, um, an enlarged prostrate. Uh, what he meant by that also was that the, the prostrate was actually uh, blocking my urethra, which is the reason why I was not able to pass water properly. And at that point, he, because initially he thought that we could treat this uh, with drugs rather than sort of surgery. But he said to me, it was in such a, uh, he said, you, you can leave it if you want to, but it won't get any better. He says, the symptoms that you had where you'd be, you had to be admitted to hospital, will happen again, maybe in a month, maybe in two months time, but it will happen again. So he said, sooner rather than later, you will need to have surgery. He actually did give me some drugs in between time, between seeing him and actually having the procedure, which did help things a lot better in terms of sort of uh, being able to pass water, and also because I was sort of self-catheterizing myself, only at the beginning, because after I think a couple of a week or so, I stopped doing that, I, there was no need because my actual sort of flow had got that much better. Uh, but, uh, and I said to him, things have actually improved. He said, yes, things have actually improved now for the time being, but they will start to deteriorate again. 
On seeing him again uh, to discuss what procedures to take, he obviously uh, made available, he said there, there is the Terps or the Green Knight or Eurolift, I think there's maybe another one possible. He said these are all the ones which are available. They all have a certain amount of success rate. They all have certain side effects. Uh, but there is something new, which has only been sort of, uh, at the time I think he said it had been maybe 300 cases. cases. And he said this has been trialled. Uh, it's not available under the NHS. He said, I don't think it's even available under your insurance companies, uh, uh, by your insurance company. Uh, but uh, he said, the cases that I've been involved in, and also the cases where this aquablation is what he called it, um, the, the other tests that have been done, they've proven to be very successful. I think, if I remember correctly, he said that there probably were, I don't know, 90, 95% sort of success rate. Um, gave me all the, the benefits about it all. Uh, the other ones, the, the ones available, uh, he said they do have a certain amount of uh, success, but on a lot of these ones here, there's, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, a 70% chance of sexual uh, dysfunction afterwards. So. He put it on the table, he said, you can have these ones here, which are all very, very good, which I've done many of them in the past, or there's this relatively new one, which we know a little about, but not a great deal about, this aquablation. But as he put it to me, he said, you know, we've, uh, we do have a certain amount of uh, information, and they've been very, very good. He said, uh, I've done a few of these already, if I'm not mistaken, and um, it's available. Uh, but at a cost. Um, so he said, if you know, if you're interested, think about it, and then uh, come back and see me. Well, I went away, thought about it, discussed it with my wife, and I said, well, I'm, I'm happy enough to go ahead with this one here because I don't really want to go down the route of the other ones where there may be a strong possibility that this or that may happen afterwards. And so I went back to see Mr. Barber, uh, we discussed it f further, and um, I decided, yeah, okay, fine, We're, I'm going to do the, uh, go ahead with the aquablation um, on the next available opportunity, uh, which wasn't uh, until, I think, the new year, this was in December I saw him, I think there was, a, there was an appointment available in the end of January. As it was, that didn't take uh, part because there weren't enough people to take part in, 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 the op in the other procedures available that day. So it was postponed further until the end of February. And uh, yes, went through it all. Went in on uh, the Sunday to have this uh, procedure. Went in on Sunday morning. Had the procedure about Sunday lunchtime. I think it only, if I remember rightly, uh, it probably took at the most uh, half an hour, probably less, the actual procedure itself. Uh, and within, I think an hour and a half of being a, sort of taken down into theatre, I was awake again in, uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the ward, where they were, if you like, uh, you probably know more about the procedure anyway, where they are flushing you through, etc., to get rid of any of the blood scars, etc. Back in my uh, room in the, in the, in the hospital, uh, that e early that evening, and I, the following day, lunchtime of the following day, I was uh, given the, the okay to go home. Um, all catheters taken out, sent home. Uh, this was on the Monday. On the Tuesday, I was on my feet, walking about, gingerly sort of walking about, obviously taking things a little bit easy. And on the Wednesday, I was back at work. My work is, uh, I have a restaurant, so I'm on my feet most of the day, all of the day, so I was moving about. And I think within possibly three weeks, three or four weeks, I think when I went to see him again after the, the procedure, he said, yeah, fine, if you want to, you can go back and do light exercises in the gym, whatever you feel, however best you feel. And I did that. And I think probably a few weeks down the road, I was out on my road bike, uh, out cycling with my friends, you know, one of my hobbies that I take part in my spare time. And yeah, it was great, really good. After the, the operation, I, um, as I said, the, uh, it was 
I never felt better year for years, in all honesty. I actually said to him, I said to Mr. Baba that uh, I could not remember when I last, uh, you know, passed water as freely as I did then. Uh, it's been great, you know. Uh, no, no, no side effects, no more getting up at night, no more having that urgency where you've got to, you know, immediately go, otherwise you, you feel like you're going to wet yourself. Absolutely, you know, really good. Um, yeah. I was very, very, very happy with the procedure, yes, very happy indeed. I can recommend it. When I went to see Mr. Barber, uh, with regards to the different options available, uh, uh, different options available to help my uh, BPH, my enlarged uh, prostate gland, he offered me the ones which are available, uh, the various sort of laser treatments, green light, Terps, and I think Eurolift was also one of the options available at the time. But later on, when I'd had further tests, uh, some of these weren't uh, exactly suitable, and I was not actually, they weren't options that could take place. He explained to me the, the procedure involved with the laser, the heat treatment, um, the possible side effects that may occur afterwards. And then there was this other treatment, which is called aquablation which was the one which was not uh, freely available, if you like, uh, on the NHS or either with regards to my insurance company, where the procedure, uh, instead of being using heat, it used water, where it, if it became, it was a more precise type of um, uh, form of surgery as opposed to the other ones. Uh, where it went on to explain that uh, the other uh, type of surgery where heat was involved, it tended to sort of uh, burn away at a lot of nerve endings where, if you like, later on you may have occurred maybe sort of slight sort of sexual dysfunction. Uh, so when he offered me this other alternative, uh, I was more inclined to sort of go down the lines of maybe going down this route rather than sort of the more traditional routes in terms of sort of uh, um, prostate surgery. On the day of uh, my surgery, uh, I went down very early sort of to the admittance hospital. Um, I was admitted in uh, to theatre about midday. The uh, surgery itself, I think, think, took less than half an hour. Uh, within an hour and a half, two hours, I was back on my hospital ward. And I finished the day, if you like, uh, in my ward. I had a little bit of pain that evening, in so much as that I had a catheter still left in me. And uh, essentially what it was, was that uh, because I wasn't relaxing uh, as well enough as I should, it was causing me, if you like, a problem to sort of pass water. But with a bit of uh, sort of few painkillers here and there, that pain eventually sort of disappeared. But it was the only pain I had had during any form of the surgery, it was that evening after the surgery. The next day, uh, by lunchtime, I was able to go home. Uh, able to go home, uh, had uh, my normal evening meal at home that day, and the next day, Tuesday, after the uh, surgery, I was up on my feet, walking about, quite sort of gingerly, obviously, after a bit of surgery. And the following day, the Wednesday, I was back at my place of work. And within, I would say, six to seven days, I was sort of walking about as per normal. Um, within three weeks, I went to see my uh, surgeon, Mr. Barber, again. He gave me the all okay if I wanted to sort of start any sort of physical exercise in the gym. Went back to the gym as I normally do, my normal routine. Did that, and I think further still down the road, probably about three or four weeks down the, the line, I was uh, out uh, road cycling with my friends, and uh, yes, it uh, had no side effects, so it came back very, very well. The, the job did what it was supposed to do. I was not getting up anymore at night, passing water freely, everything back to normal, better than it was before, in all honesty.